The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hi, and welcome back to The Learning Circuit. When a lot of hobbyists go to make a cool project, they'll reach for a microcontroller, like an Arduino. But before those were developed and readily available, the 555 timer was a great, accessible, and affordable tool that can be used to create any number of circuits. One way to use the 555 timer is in bi-stable mode. In bi-stable mode, two different input signals are used to set the 555 output either high or low. The output stays in that state until one of the signals causes it to change. So let's say we have two buttons connected to the 555. Hitting the first button, the 555 outputs high. Hitting the second button, the 555 outputs low. Let's take a closer look at the 555 to understand how that works. The 555 timer has eight pins. Pins one and eight are used to power the chip. Pin three is the output. For bistable mode, the other two important pins are pin two, trigger, and pin six, threshold. Inside the 555, pins two and six are each connected to a comparator. A comparator is a device that has two inputs. Of the two, if the positive input has a higher voltage, the comparator will output high. If the negative input has a higher voltage, the comparator will output low. Trigger, pin two, is connected to the negative input of its comparator. We'll call this comparator one. The other positive input of comparator one is connected to a voltage divider made up of resistors that connects the power and ground pins of the 555. From here, the positive input of comparator one is supplied one third of the supply voltage, one third VCC. So if the supply voltage is nine volts, the positive input gets three volts. Or if the supply voltage is 12 volts, the positive input would get four volts. When comparator one outputs high, the 555 also outputs high. To make comparator one output high, the voltage at pin two needs to be lower than one third VCC. The easy way to do this is to connect the trigger pin to ground. This connects pin two to zero volts, which is lower than the one third VCC voltage of the positive input. So comparator one outputs high. However, we want the default state of comparator one to be off. So we want comparator one's negative input to have a voltage higher than one third VCC. To do that, we can connect pin two to the supply voltage at pin eight. However, this creates a short between power and ground, which is bad because it can damage your circuit. So we'll start by adding a button to ground so pin two is only connected when the button is pressed. Then we add a resistor to the connection at pin eight. When the button is open, pin two is pulled high to VCC. The negative input of comparator one has a higher voltage so it outputs low. When the button is pressed, electricity takes the path of least resistance, avoiding the resistor, taking the direct path from pin two to ground. This makes comparator one's positive input larger, so it and the 555 output high. And the 555 will continue to output high even if the button is released. This 555 output state is stable. It will stay high. In bistable mode, there are two stable states. So let's talk about how we set up the 555 for the other stable state, outputting low. We used pin two to trigger the 555 output high. We can use pin six, threshold, to make the 555 output low. Threshold is connected to a second comparator. We'll call it comparator two. However, while trigger is connected to the negative input, threshold is connected to the positive input. Comparator 2's negative input connects to the voltage divider and is supplied 2 thirds VCC. We want this comparator to also default to off, outputting low. So we need pin 6, connected to the positive input, to have a voltage lower than the 2 thirds VCC of the negative input. The easiest way to do that is to connect threshold to ground. And like we did with the default state of comparator 1, we add a resistor. Since we want to be able to selectively pull threshold high, we connect it to VCC with a button. With this setup, threshold will stay pulled low through the resistor to ground. 
And when the button is pressed, the pin takes the path of least resistance through the button, pulling the pin high to VCC. This causes comparator 2 to output high, causing the 555 to output low. Release the button and the 555 continues to output low. The state is stable. The 555 timer is now set up in bi-stable mode. Let's recap. The 555 output starts low. When the button connected to trigger is pressed, the 555 output is switched to high. When that button is released, the 555 output doesn't change. This is the first stable output state, high. When the button connected to threshold is pressed, the 555 output is switched to low. When that button is released, the 555 output doesn't change. This is the second stable output state, low. Let's see how this works with some real parts. To the breadboard! Here we have the circuit set up on a breadboard. A few extra things to note. For the 555 to function properly, we need to connect a couple more pins. Pin 4, reset, needs to be connected to VCC. Pin 5, discharge, needs to be connected to ground with a small capacitor, either like a 0.1 microfarad or a 10 nanofarad. All right, to our main circuits. Pin 2, trigger, is connected to VCC through a resistor, then also connected to ground through this button. Pin 6, threshold, is connected to ground through a resistor, then also connected to VCC through this button. The connections through the resistors keep both internal comparators held low, effectively off. When the first button is pressed, comparator 1 is set high and the 555 outputs high. When button 2 is pressed, the output of comparator 2 is set high, which resets the 555 output back to low. Connecting trigger to ground makes the 555 output high. Connecting threshold to VCC makes the 555 output low. High, low, high, and low, and high, and low. So that's how to set up the 555 timer in bi-stable mode. There are a bunch of applications for this circuit, but I wanna hear your ideas. How would you use this circuit in a project? Post about your ideas and builds on the Element 14 community. And if you're still confused and you'd like to learn more, you can check out my other videos on 555 timers. For this and more, check for links in the description. Happy learning.